And some more funky music from Slapback, and we're going to welcome Jarrah Harris. Hey, Jarrah. What's happening, man? Hey, we, we got a good fill of Slapback in the new record. Hey, it's no, working. No, nothing wrong with that, but... <laughs> <laughs> cool. And, be, and believe it or not, we have new studios down here, so, you know... Yeah, what now? Yeah, we, have, we have new studios down here. Oh, okay. So, but the hey. phone lines are a little crazy, but... Right, hey, right. Yeah, thanks for taking the time out. I know you're, you're awfully busy. Hey, no problem, man. No problem. You guys been getting us a lot, lot of support out there, and you know, I'm I'm just glad to to have some funketeers out there keeping it real. You know. Well, you've been uh, going strong since the the early '90s. How do you, how do you see it? Uh, you know, ten years later, uh, 2002, and releasing a, a straight up funk album, which you stay true. I got to give you a lot of credit with that. Oh, but well, thank you, man. I, I I really I really don't have a choice. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's what's, that's what's in me, you know, and I just, I have to keep it, you know, true to that, but, you know, we've, you know, Slapback's been through a lot of changes and, you know, different labels and all kinds of stuff over the last 10 years. It's funny because it's been 10 years now since, since the first time was, was released. And, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's been a definite roller coaster, man. As far as, as far as this industry is concerned, especially especially when when you're doing stuff like what we're doing, that's not uh, uh, cookie cutter stuff, right? You know, so it's it's hard to keep to keep your own thing and still try to you know uh, uh, break through in, in, in you know in this industry. But <laughs> luckily, because the people like you and I mean even BET and and I mean Slapex had so much love uh, over the years, it just kind of helped keep you know, kind of help keep the band alive, you know, and then we got this stuff popping off in Europe right now, we just got put on a, a DVD compilation with Snoop Dogg and Ice-T and all this stuff, and it's, it's really, it's really kicking up right now. And, and I, I made mention about Slapback and Jarrah Harris's music, it's like timeless, you know, kind of the music that's, you know, you could drop it 10 years from now and you can't pinpoint exactly where it's from. Right, right. So how, how do you do you enjoy releasing it? I mean, you're an independent artist. Do you right. do you enjoy releasing it these days and putting all that extra work, or you know, you, you wish it was a little easier the other way around? Man, it's it's kind of weird because uh, you know the, the first album with Warner Brothers, it was it was a completely different approach, and um, at least I wasn't really comfortable in in that environment like uh you know being in being in a big studio and you know catering and all that kind of stuff it just to me as far as i mean funk to me is supposed to be dirty and and when you uh when when you go about recording the whole process like that it kind of takes away the the whole dirt of it so it was hard for me uh recording in that environment and that's why the first album kind of sounds the way it does people used to come and see us live and they would be like wow you guys are so much you know funkier live than than the album but that's because by the time we went through all the politics with that first album and and you know and and, and different producers and all the other kind of stuff which i ended up producing it myself but people don't realize we went through like a, a year and a half of just uh, bs you know before that record came out so actually after doing it that way that's when i kind of got more like i wanted to have more uh hands-on as far as the uh, the sound and i just went and bought the gear and from 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 that point on slapbacks always recorded uh our, our our own cds in my studio and you could record just about any time of day right there you go right right yeah. you know and it's cool i mean uh, the blue light special we we did that and like she was in the kitchen in the garage. I mean, we're doing drums in the kitchen. We're doing, uh, you know, drums in the living room. Just you know that whole vibe. And uh, I was mixing, mixing in the garage. Everything was running to the garage. So <clears throat> that was like our first. That was our first extreme from from going like the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget to like a three thousand dollar budget. And that's why we called that album uh, Blue Light Special. <laughs> But, you know, Radio Shack mics, I mean, the whole bit. Uh-huh. 
so so the the catalogs available for our, our listeners right now um you can go to toxicfunk.com right. and the new CD Fast Food Funketeers second right. edition mm-hmm. and uh it's going to get a a different little turn of event released in Europe you were telling me before right right it's that that album right there is uh uh labeled Funk to the Max uh through Challenge Records picked it up out in um Holland so they, uh, they they actually they actually did the artwork and did like an eight page, but look uh, uh, but look with the, the um, pictures and you know credits all that stuff and just kind of to give the uh, consumer a little more than just like the CD you know what I mean so I mean because everybody today is just downloading stuff off off the internet so their whole thing was they want to make it where people want to buy it and I guess get the artwork whatever yeah. <laughs> A little so, like, twist, so, you yeah. know that that's cool, you know. And the, uh, the the but the CD, the tunes on the CD are still the same, except there's one song, uh, "Pop That Cookie" that was that was added last minute. So it's just like one extra song in there, but it's pretty much the same album. But you know, uh, uh, Fast Funky Two Second Edition, there's only like <clears throat> a couple thousand of those printed up that Toxic Funk did ourselves. So you really you really won't be able to find that that version with that artwork after you know after we get rid of these last 200 copies mm-hmm. you know so so i better walk safely to the parking lot right for this after this show <laughs> so what I, I i should be careful walking to the parking lot in case any of our fans want to <laughs> snatch this up right after the show <laughs> yeah uh-huh <laughs> but yeah it, it's a great you know like i was telling you you know continued uh slap back just is just incredible music. I first came introduce a friend of mine. Uh, he lives out in Sweden now, and okay. uh, he turned me on to you back in the early '90s. And uh, oh, cool! Yeah, he, he's probably out there listening. To Anthony uh, Chatelaine out out in uh, Sweden. But, oh, cool! But uh, hey, you what's know up, you're Anthony. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Anthony? Jarrett said. Um, I got to ask you. You know, you're, you're a multi instrumentalist. Play just about everything on the record. Mm-hmm. Um, how about the instrument, which is your number one as far as talent. What 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 instrument do you, you need to work the most on? You think? Um, I I would say my my least uh, 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 my 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 least strongest instruments would be probably keyboards and and guitar. Mm-hmm. But you know I I still I mean I I play them. The reason why I say that because as far as uh, drums is my main instrument. I played drums since I was uh, four years old. So, I mean, I've done, as far as drums, I've, you know, jazz, funk, rock, whatever. So drums is like in my blood. So that's why it's easy easy to uh, drop down the bass. And and same, same thing for rhythm guitar. I mean, it you know, it all stems from rhythm. So that's why, as far as the slapback stuff, I mean, I, I play all that stuff. I sound strong on it. But if you were to put me in a situation, you know, play some jazz on keyboards or guitar, I, I couldn't hang. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you're honest, right? You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. But as far as funk, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm strong on, on uh, all of them. Now, how, how about when you're working on a new record like this, and uh, how much of the, the song do you bring completed to the band, um, adding their touches on it? How, how does that usually work with your writing? Uh, you know, it's funny, man, because the slapback usually... Uh, you know, we've had about maybe four different uh, slapback bands. <laughs> you know, and uh, the, the sound always stems for me. Usually, I have I have a CD like mostly done, and then I'll have uh, the members that come in. We usually end up getting involved. They usually end up getting involved on the uh, tail end. Like on, on this album, there's about seven songs that's very uh, band oriented, like. Uh, so funky how you suck my thumb. I did like the the bass, drums, guitar, and keyboards. But then like Crank came in and 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 wrote like the you know hook to it and added some keyboard stuff. You know what I mean? I had a uh, uh, cat Jim um, Jim who played trombone on it, who played on Blue Light Special. So different cats come in once once we start putting the band together, getting ready for live. And then I brought in the DJ and he uh, DJ Roughneck. He brought in a whole different flavor and. Shell Dog on the guitar. He wrote like the guitar doing. I, just, you know, because I'm like recording year round, you know, and I just end up 
you know, when it's time to do a CD, I just pick the songs I want to put on there. <laughs> so the vault in Orange County is pretty strong, right? So what? Yeah, I, I said your musical vault of songs is pr- pretty big out in Orange County, right? Yeah, well, uh-huh. you know, I, um, I, I man, I'm I'm pretty much quiet uh, wherever, wherever I am, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm just that's why I I don't I didn't mix that well with uh, L.A. because I'm really not the uh, I'm not the uh, sh- I'm not really the showboating type type mm-hmm. guy. I just you know I I do what I do. I like to just kind of get into you know my vibe, and and I I can't really it's hard for me to get into the. Uh, uh, business and network inside that's why that's that's the main reason why probably it's been such a uh a, a slow cruise for slapback but yet we're always in it you know worldwide but it's, it's still been like it's hard for me to jump on that uh i'm definitely not like madonna <laughs> you know what i'm saying well you got you know i gave you credit for that you know yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's just not, keep doing what you're doing yeah you know, with, well, thank you, man. Thank you. So, so why don't, Jer, if you don't mind, uh, we're going to get into another track off of Slapback from the cool. Fast Food Funketeer 2nd Edition. We'll come back and talk more with Jarrah Harris. Um, let's see. We're going to go a little deeper into the album. This is called Never Fake the Funk. Oh, go ahead. And it's available at Toxic, hey. <laughs> toxicfunk.com. And Jarrah Harris, the leader of Slapback. We'll come back and talk more with Jarrah right, Harris. All right, man. You got it. And the great sounds of Slap Back featuring Jarrah Harris, who's my special guest this hey. afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what song was that? Uh, Never Fake the Funk. Never Fake the Funk. Yeah. So so we're getting all over the album. We just don't focus on the one single. So, um, you know, we give our listeners everything on the record. Cool. Yeah. And, and it's yeah, really... And I noticed that you're checking out your playlist, man. You guys have a wide variety of songs you guys play on there. Yeah, besides the local broadcast, we, you know, I, uh, myself and, and G do a 24-hour internet right. station on another outlet, which uh, if you just tuned in and wondering uh, all the great music and the interesting conversation with Jarrah Harris, uh, we will be re-airing it on another network. And uh, for three days and three nights, you can uh, send me an email at eastwestdj at AOL.com. It will be Jarrah Harris and Slapback interview and music special. So, uh, you know... People are going to be loving that as well. Oh, that's cool. That'll work. Yeah. So, you know, you're one of the guests, you know, I sent out the playlist and the announcement that you were going to be on the show last week, and mm-hmm. I got emails from musicians. Tori Ruffin said, you got to say hi to crazy musician. He said, you're incredible. <laughs> and and also Rio Soul from Rio Soul. Oh, okay. She okay. said hi. Right. Cool. And, yeah. It seems like, you know, you definitely tr- have tremendous respect in the industry and, uh, you know, how, how about collaborating with, with others? If you had an open budget to, to bring your friends over and work with you, mm-hmm. you got some people in mind you'd love to work with one day? Well, uh, Tori, for sure, man. Uh, Tori and I have been talking for a long time about getting together and, and doing something, you know, doing something together. Because he's in, Tori's like my neighbor. <clears throat> you know, he's, he's like maybe uh, like 45 minutes away from me. But, you know, again, just really hard. I mean, everybody's. Uh, focusing on different things, and I tell you, man, it, it's it's something else trying to just coordinate something simple like that. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, if I'm if I if I have time ta- if I have time, he might be out of town. If he's in town, I might be in the studio. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can I can <laughs> empathize so, uh, with you on that. Yeah, but yeah, there, there's a couple. I mean, uh, Michelle um, in Dingen Cello, I like to work with her. She's she's very hip to slap back and. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens after uh, after this record comes out, and um, you know, because there's there's a lot of people out in uh, Europe I like to work with as well, like Mug Bone, and been talking with him here and there. And we'll see. And, and you have uh, a lot of uh, fans, and and you've been doing a lot of work out in Europe. You played the North Sea Jazz Festival, right? Did you? No, play we that didn't. Or? Oh, okay. We did. We're actually supposed to be on that this. Uh, this coming summer. Okay, but you did do some dates recently out there, right? You were out uh, there. You know, the only thing stuff? I've done, only thing I've done out in Europe, I was they had me as a special guest at the uh, Funk to the Max party. Okay. Uh, ab- about about a year ago, and that's when I uh, made contact with uh, Funk to the Max, and we ended up just doing a deal with them uh, j- just recently. And that's and that's uh, the album is called Ghetto Funkography. That's coming out like uh, next month. 
and it'll, it'll be our first of the year out in the uh, U.S. All right. So, so a lot of people showing uh, you a lot of love. And why don't you talk a little bit about some of the members in your band that worked on this record and, and who uh, play with you on the on the live dates? I mean, I gotta be honest. I really don't want to talk about them. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's one of those situations. No, I'm kidding, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. oh man, I'm I'm just I'm just glad they were in here when I said that. I, <laughs> you, you're, you're the first artist who ever said that about me. I know you're joking though. <laughs> well, you know there's 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 T J Quick man who's pretty much like my other half. He he um he wasn't involved on on the uh, first two albums. He came in on uh, if it ain't broke don't funk with it. And I, you know if if you know a little bit about him, he's he does the raps and he kind of sing sing raps. Okay. He's like character raps. He's just that guy. He's like he's like so much, and he, um, you know, that's that. If anything, that's what I usually collaborate with the most. So yeah. I'll do like I I always do like the tracks, and we'll like collaborate on, on like the the vocals and stuff like that, or he'll put a rap on it. So uh, uh, you know, we he's been in the band now for about seven years strong now, and then uh, crank. Who uh, was the original keyboard player? He was in it up. He was in it up to everything broke on funk with it. Then he was out. He just got back in the band a year ago. <laughs> so he's so, back. Yeah. Yeah. So he he's back. Which which he he really is truly the, the only keyboard player for this band. Uh, it, Slapback was kind of built off of him and uh, Chainsaw from the uh, and uh, Scotty Bravo from from the first album. Because before that, I was just solo. It was called Jera Sound. Okay. And, you know, again, you know, I'm down here in Orange County. Nobody knew anything about funk. I just recorded everything, and I had a band that I played with live. And then when I got with uh, Crank and Chainsaw and uh, uh, Scotty Bravo, it became more of a band thing, and that's when we came up with Slapback. So it's cool having uh, one of the original cats back. And then uh, uh, Aleda Rodriguez... She's uh, the newest member, and, uh, you know, if you listen to any of the previous slapback stuff, she actually, there's more female vocals on, on this album than than, uh, than than any other slapback album, especially, like, uh, leave female vocal parts. And, uh, you know, her she, she just has real nice R&B flavor. So all these different things are put in, like, you know, different ingredients. Uh, in the band now. That's why this album is so different. A lot of people were shocked when they heard this album compared to the other stuff because, like, I know there's a couple uh, fans out in France uh, They have a magazine they were doing a write-up on us and they were, like, almost shocked to the point of they didn't know if they liked it at first. <laughs> and then, like, two days later, she sent me an email just apologizing, saying, God, this is just another great you know, slap that creation. It's just, she said it's so different that it shocked her at first. But you know, because uh, you know we have a DJ now, DJ Roughneck. Mm-hmm. Uh, he 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 came into the band about two years ago, and he just he has he has a whole different flavor. And I never even thought about having to DJ in the band, but uh, saw this guy. He was DJing at a club that we we're playing at, and, and and honestly, I I wasn't I didn't favor DJs in bands. I thought why. Why are DJs in bands? I, you know, this is a fad. I'm just not digging. <laughs> you know, but uh, I was over there with my drummer, Josh, and I heard this this percussion stuff going on. And I swear, it sounded like a percussion player. It wasn't like your typical. I mean, it was like some 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 heavy funky stuff. I go, what is that? I turned over. I turned around. It was this DJ. Yeah, three. You know, little short Mexican dude. I'm going. What? I said, Josh, you got to go talk to him. <laughs> because you know, uh, you know, DJs out here usually have an attitude. I didn't even want to. I didn't want to go talk to him. <laughs> so it's been Josh over there to talk to me. He's a really cool dude, and he came. You know, he came aboard like a week later. He's been with us ever since. But mm-hmm. he's this guy is insane. He sings. You know, he's he's co he, he's co-written some songs with me and stuff like that. And uh, Josh, the drummer, he's. He's been on board for about two years now, and he just changed the whole feel of, you know, a slapback. He's he's like this guy. He's like a uh, Josh is a producer himself, so it's, it's neat having a drummer that listens to everybody 
around him, just not, you know, just a drummer that's, I'm playing drums, this is a drummer that listens to everything around him, and I swear, man, this, the feel of Slapback right now is so different from what I've, I've ever had that I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited about it. So you, you yeah. probably will be doing a bunch of dates coming up, right? You're lining stuff up like that? Oh, yeah. Well, we uh-huh. uh, out, out here in uh, West Coast, we, we've been uh, touring a lot. And uh, I swear, I mean, if, you know, we, we've done a couple of TV shows out here. And every time we play, man, it just escalates into something else because the band is so serious. You know, I, um, I definitely can't leave out uh, Shell Dog, the, the key, uh, guitar player. You know, I, I used to have two guitar players for for a long time. Uh, um, since since the first album, I've always had, I've always had two guitar players. This this guy does it by himself. I mean, he's so <laughs> he's he's so strong and he's he's so ballsy. His sound is so thick, and he can switch from that rock stuff to the funk stuff to the jazz. I mean, a great addition to the band, right? He's, yeah. Oh man, it's, it's serious. It's serious, and if I'm missing anybody else in the band, it's because they're not important. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't, was that seven? <laughs> hey, we're just having fun. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's it. No, that's right. that's it. It's that, that's another thing. It was a nine-piece band for years, and now it's a seven-piece band, yeah. and it's just tighter. It's is no it's no extra anything. Everyone that's there needs to be there, and and they 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 play a real important part to. to to the uh, to the sound. So we're going to get into another track from uh, the fast food Funketeer second edition from Slapback and Jerry Harris, and uh, we'll get into uh, get your funk on. And then uh, if if you got a little time, we'll come back and talk a little more with Jerry hey, Harris. Hey man, I'm here. All right, this is Slapback. Yes, the remix. Get your funk on from Slapback, Jerry Harris. Thanks, Jerry, for that one. You bet, man. You like I said, you're the only one with that remix. Wow! So I feel blessed to have that one. Yeah, yeah. You, you got you got that by accident. I'm right. gonna have to have you send that back. To me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, I'll be at the post office tomorrow, right? <laughs> yeah. So so why don't you uh, tell our listeners? I know this probably you you got a story uh, a nice story about getting into music. How far back? I, I know you mentioned about uh, getting into music when you were like four years old. Right. Uh huh. How, how did that go about? Uh, man, I, I was actually gigging at four years old with Whoa. with the with, with the family band. Uh, the, the 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 old thing with drums, you know, people talk about a a, a God given gift. That's what you know. My parents always say because I did learn drums. They just discovered one day that I could play drums, um, and so uh, it, it wasn't long. They they discovered I could play drums at three, and I, I was gigging with the family band at at. By four, I mean we we did a lot of big, we did a lot of big gigs when I was four years old. You know, like we did like the Black Music Awards and stuff. Uh, like uh, uh, Mandrill was there, and I mean all that kind of stuff back back in the day. Yeah, you know, er, early seventies. I was playing Skin Tight when it was out. You know, uh huh. <laughs> At five years old, but uh, so you know that I coming from a, a, a musical family. You know, it, it, it was a blessing for me because, um, you know, I have, I was, there was like a, a large, it was a big uh, um, gap between my older brothers and my older sister and I. And so my my, uh, my oldest brother was 16 at the time, my other brother was 15. And so uh, there was, you know, I'm five, four and five years old. So that's how I got schooled into like, you know, the pocket and, Trying to get this four-year-old to, to to smack the snare so they can feel it. <laughs> it, it sounds crazy now, but you know um, that's. I mean, they they really they really had no mercy on me because they knew that that I could do it. So about the time I was, uh, you know, eight years old, ten years old, I, I was, you know, I was, I was gigging quite quite a bit, even with uh, different people playing drums. So uh, uh, I, I definitely. Had you know years, and you know, years under my belt before I even started doing my own my own band when I was like you know fifteen, sixteen. So uh, yeah, I always I always thank my brothers for 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 giving me that that coaching that I had when I was younger. You know, how, how about growing up uh, listening to groups? What was on your uh, stereo or radio? Uh, when when I was younger, yeah, when you were younger, man. When, when I was like. Uh, 
when, when I was like old enough to really, uh, I mean, I mean, I liked Jackson Five, of course, and we were always compared to the Jackson Five. But uh, I remember, like in the late seventies, just really playing like George Duke records over and over and over. It was my my older brother's tape, and I would just play that, reach for it. Yeah, reach for it out all the time. Anything with George Duke and Stanley Clark, I was all about that from like age eight to ten. Uh huh. So and it's funny. So I I I definitely have that background in in my music. But then like in my my teenage years, I was really into to new wave because you know, I was you know like about I don't know thirteen fourteen during the whole uh, new wave movement like in the eighties. So I was really into like Duran Duran and Missing Persons and and all that stuff. And Missing Persons was my favorite band for years. Terry Bozio, right? Yeah, Terry yeah. Bozio was my that was my inspiration. He's a drummer, and and I was just that guy changed my life as far as drumming is concerned. And uh, so uh, I was I was all about that up until Purple Rain came out. <laughs> <laughs> Like a lot of us. <laughs> when Prince came out of Purple Rain, I mean, that changed that changed music for every every musician that was playing anything, whether you play rock, funk, or that movie, just, especially being like, you know, uh, 14 or, or 16 when it, I would think it was 14 when that movie came out. I mean, I was very impressionable at that, at that point. So I was, oh man, I had to do that. You know, and and so I was all about Prince, right. of course, as, as a teenager. <laughs> and when I turned eighteen, and I started driving up to L.A. and started meeting with different people, I remember I, I was meeting with like with uh, Norman uh, Norman Whitfield Jr. I got hooked up with him through my sister, who was working with Howie Rice and him at the time, and they just started playing me. Oh man, you know. You like funk? Listen to this. Let me, you know, show you some real funk. And they start playing just like some stuff that George was working on back then that that they were engineering. And I, I would just get tapes that that you know tapes that weren't released that George was on or Tony Lamont's or you know all these guys were like surrounded in that camp. So I just start getting dropped on. I'm going, whoa! I mean, I love Purple Rain, but this ain't funk. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And then uh, I just, and then I just got as wanted to get as dirty as I can get, and then I just kept searching it out, and then my whole, my whole uh, tape selection just changed to just like, you know, P funk stuff. And then, then I heard uh, my girlfriend at the time; she had uh, 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 that Bootsy tape. Uh, what was it called the One Giveth the Count Taketh Away? Okay. And I heard Shino Might. <laughs> That was it for me. You got after more I, dirty. <laughs> after I heard Bootsy Shine on Might, I said, <laughs> funk is where it's at. I, you know what I mean? I just, I couldn't, I can not go back. I can not go back. I just, it's, every album is all about how funky can I get ever, ever since then. You know? And, that's, and it's like, it's weird. It's like, funk is like a drug. You, you know, you're never satisfied with whatever you come up with. It's like, you always feel like, you need to get funky, right? Right. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? How, how about the uh, the young kids growing up today grasping on to to music like slapback, the real funk? Um, is it a real difficult thing, or do you find some young kids getting into it? You know, I, I have to say, where it seems to me, and I I, I really pay attention to where music is going. That's how I was kind of uh, upset with uh, Warner Brothers because I knew at the time that we got with Warner Brothers hip-hop was really bringing in funk like crazy back then. Everything they were sampling was, you know, Atomic Dog at the time. Everybody was using, like, more bounds. I mean, I, you know, I, the timing is perfect to come out with the real funk band that's doing new funk. And they didn't they didn't really get it. They didn't, I don't think, you know, when you're dealing with cats that are, like, 40 and 50, they don't, they don't listen to the stations. They're not out on the streets checking out what everybody else is checking out. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I'm trying to tell them, Digital Underground is on pop radio now. It's, it's P-Funk, you know, music. This this is what's happening right now. You know, we could, you know, sneak right on that coattail right there and come in and, because they were trying to figure out 
how can we market you guys? You know what I mean? So now it's weird because we producers have always told me over the years, and I got I got to tell those guys thanks for encouraging me. They're like, you know what, man, just keep doing what you're doing. It's going to finally catch up to you. And I've, that, I've always kept that in my mind, although I, I could have very easily gone and done like an R&B record or a straight hip-hop record. I mean, I could do that all day long. But I, I've always felt like I need to keep that that funk foundation. And and now, you know, after I started seeing uh, 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 P-Funk on basketball commercials and you know, everything you see now is tied into some soul thing. You got new old soul, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm even checking like uh, uh, hip hop mixing with like the rock now. I'm like, we've always done that. That was always a no no to mix alternative and 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 hip hop and and funk. That was like a no no. That's why that's why one of us was so confused. They were so confused because they signed us. It's like a fishbone chili peppers act. That's how we ended up, like, in the rock department. Benny Medina and all those guys, they passed on us. But then when the record came out, and we had George and Bootsy and all this stuff on it, and R&B radio started grabbing at it, they're, like, scratching their head, like, huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? They yeah. So it's really, but now, where, where music is now, it's, it's starting to be where it's, like, it's really cool to have your own identity, because everything that's out now is, like, different. And just like four years ago, everything was like cookie cutter, just, you know, in sync, uh, uh, five, 90 degrees, you know, Backstreet Boys, they're all just a bunch of cookie cutters. But now you look at the stuff that's coming out, everyone's kind of starting to push the envelope a little bit. And they're coming back to the funk big time. So all, all those elements for, for us seem to be like, okay, it might be our time right now. And uh, slap back, the, folks. You got to pick up the CD. Uh, it's Fast Food Funketeers, the second edition, and it's available. All, in fact, the catalog's available from Slapback at ToxicFunk dot com, and uh, people can order it. Independent musician. We always stress: got to support. You got to buy buy the records wherever possible, and uh, you know all the information is on there. Do you, do you do a radio show? Is that a friend of yours does a radio show? Uh, that well, we we actually became friends from doing that. But uh, this guy, just like you, was you know giving us support down at the station down here and uh, KSBR, he, right? Yeah, KSBR. Yeah. He had us come in and do a um, do like a um, radio spot, you know, in the studio. And he just he had such a good time with, and he plays like majority of slapback anyway on his show that. He changed it from the funk hour to the toxic funk radio show, and so we go in and host it whenever, you know, we have time. If we're not playing that night, oh, that's cool. But, you know, but you know, man, I, I just want to say real fast too to to you know again what you're saying about the about the young musicians coming up is the best thing you can do is if if you believe in what you're doing, stay true to that. But 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 more than anything, I, you know, I've never drank in my life. I just. My my whole thing is just my focus is on you know the music and just you know I'm telling you I mean that's this is how this industry eats up musicians is because there's so many things around us that it's easy for us to fall into that. Hey, I I got to give you major kudos for that. I'm I'm clean living too. So. Oh right on, man. Yeah, got to. You know, it's, that it's something about you. I could just tell. Oh really? <laughs> I could just tell. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, play, that plays a big part, man. Yeah, you can accomplish a lot of things with your head on straight. Right, yep. right. But uh, I want to thank you, Jarrah Harris. And, hey, man, it's my yeah, pleasure. Man, it's been really great to talk to you. I know um, a lot of our fans here in the U.S. and in the Connecticut area. In fact, while, you know, I didn't want to interrupt you when you were talking, but we right. got another in- instant message from someone who wanted to know when uh, Slapback is going to be coming to the Connecticut and New York City area. But uh, you know what? That that is like our main focus right now. I just want to let everybody know. Trust me, we will be coming out there no matter what. Get on the bus, yeah, ain't no stopping us. <laughs> and you know what? We're when, coming. When you're out here, we we got a studio here. I, I bring in bands all the time to play in the studio, or we set up a little stage outside. And and you what? Know, you've got the open invitation to do that. Man, I am all about that. Yeah, I'm all about that. Maybe even get Tori to come along for a ride one time. <laughs> Tori? Yeah. 
Man, I bring a toy over. But but yeah, but, we we just we just might do that. Right. We, he might have a championship football game that night, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Much love to uh, Tori Ruffin and, and of course Jara Harris. And uh, oh, thank I want to thank you for bringing the guitar back into funk music as well. I oh, guess you know man. the song "Stop," right? Man, what what is funk without guitar? Yeah. That that's my question. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> got to be there. So so we're going to go out with uh, something again from Fast Food Funketeers, the second edition from Slapback and Jarrah Harris. Uh, this one's called Stop on the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. Thanks again, Jarrah. Oh, you bet, man. And, and just Take hang tight. Easy, man. God bless you, man.